On this episode of Designer Notes, we're going to be reviewing, finally, the Vario 1918 trench watch after sitting on it for about, well, two months. Sorry, Vario. In our blueprint segment, we're going to be discussing how why Thailand was able to use disruptive design and yet still come up with an elegant watch in their Adamascus line. And finally, in your viewer comments, we're going to be still discussing a lot more issues with the DWH 5600. And if I'm ever going to get one in the first place. Have you ever tried buying a watch for the first time on eBay? Or maybe tried to thin your growing collection of G-Shocks that's been lying around your bedroom? Or maybe sending that Rolex for the first time into service? If you have ever experienced any of these, you know that these are situations wherein you pull as many hair strands on your head as much as possible, stressing out on whether these things would actually go your way or not. Whether it went your way or not, you will likely know that hair is lost nonetheless. If you look at Adrian right now, this has happened to him countless times, as you can see. So, in an effort to personally correct it himself and also uh, promote horology story uh, even more every week that passes. We have developed, in partnership with Horology Story, the new Horology Story Hair Growth Spray. Well, you can see that the production value is getting up and getting higher each and every week. And also, each and every week, we're coming up with medical breakthroughs, as you may have noticed as well. This spray, one spray on the air. may have overdone it, uh, overdone it. One spray of this miracle substance will help your hair grow as full and as manly as there can ever be. And you'll never notice one bit that it's actually horology related and your, your hair will grow together with your collection. Now, we, have, we all know that you want to pair your watches with your straps you have to pair it also with your hair. Sometimes on the top and sometimes here below on your neck, which I've been trying to grow for the past 40 years, which has never happened. But nevertheless, wherever you spray this miracle product that we produce, that full volume of hair will sprout forth in no time. So. If you're stressing out of because of your watches, and if you're questioning existence, stress not or stress less, because your hair would still remain because of the horology story hair growth spray. Now, with all of that foolishness out of the way, in the past few years, there's been a growing trend of uh, military watches, and because of this, micro brands has jumped into this trend and offered a ton of military trench and aviator watches. It's really one of the more uh, popular watch styles in the market. But Vario, who is very proficient at design, is approaching this in a different way. So find out in the Vario 1918 trench watch. This video is brought to you by Vario Watches. How many times can we tell this story? The pocket watch was used in the war, soldiers were not happy at how they performed and so they strapped them to their wrists. I'm not dismissive or anything about the men who laid their lives for an ideal and the devices that they used while they are at it. But watch brands has been retelling this story in the past years, capitalizing on the lore and using it as an excuse to ride the wave of the trend. I'll be honest, Vario seems to be doing the same thing, but they're making the experience feel different. On the wrist, you can already feel its modern proportions while looking like grandpa's sticker. This one actually goes as far as even recreating the Crystal Guards. Now it looks like it belongs in a Mad Max movie. Mel Gibson or Tom Hardy, it's just not going to stick for many. But I admire the effort to actually recreate the authentic trench watch. Strip off the bunt and you'll get a bare watch on hand with its unique extending lugs. These will fit the standard 20mm straps, so the options are plentiful for this old-timer. 
It's very noticeable how this extended the lug distance, but passing through the strap is very convenient. Vario, being a supplier of leather straps, has a number of pleasing options to choose from. This gray leather single pass makes for a great slim alternative to the bulky bond strap. On smaller wrists, the 1918 Trench competes with G-Shock's signature overhang, making me rethink my life choices. Maybe the 37mm would have been much more forgiving to me personally. If you're thinking that you cannot use a two-piece band for this watch, you're half right. Vario had to make these clip-on straps to make it possible for the 1918. Once installed, you now have a lot more articulation on the lugs and a better fitting situation on your wrist. And finally, no strap demonstration is complete without our trusty Artem strap on this vintage beauty. With its stark color and soft fabric build, this configuration makes for an attractive combo this side of 007. The polished hardware also pairs well with the trench design. Crown operation is very simple. With no date complication to worry about, the... Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, there's something else to worry about. That crown position and bunt piece makes it a little harder to access the crown. These itsy bitsy teeny weeny fingers are already hitting the hardware. Now imagine if you had barnacle tips to work with. As stylish as this gray and blue setup may be, I found myself using the single pass more as this gives me room to work on this crown. Now that the crown can be touched, it's easy to twist and turn. This Miyota 82S5 movement works well enough to operate with its 40 hour power reserve and 20,000 beats per hour. It's also got that hacking seconds hand for those who cherish that feature. Screw down the crown to get that 100 meter water resistance. Let's take a closer examination with the details that gives this vintage style watch a little more pop. The case may look like a relic of the past, but this polished bezel gives a wonderful contrast against the brushed case. This gives it a more modern personality against the more basic construction of the old trench watches. It's also got this engraved case back that homages its warfare origins. It's a rather simple detail but Vario allows people to customize this part. But really, all of the fun can be found on the dial because it has all of these interesting design elements. It uses a very appropriate numeral typeface that's legible and stylish like it came straight from that bygone era. This is printed on a glossy enamel dial that provides a natural, uneven surface. The shine is so pleasing at every angle. This is juxtaposed under the beautifully textured numerals. And of course, these numerals are still visible under low light conditions. All of these small touches gives the 1918 trench a lot of personality with minimal effort. At under $400, I think this is a great value as a modern automatic watch, giving you more room to add straps and accessories from Vario or your favorite brands. But micro brands are not just all about values and savings. It's also about spinning the story that suits your tastes and preferences. Vario has proven with past collections that it's very capable of creating designs that's interesting and collectible. While other micro brands go to great lengths to stand out with their wild and exotic designs, the Trench 1918 gets itself noticed with its vintage design that's retold for the modern fan. And that is the Vario 1918 Trench Watch. It's a compact design that's offered in two different sizes. It has a number, a plethora of strap options and even comes with a protective case. So what can you ask for in a Trench Watch at this very budget-friendly price, then you might want to go with a Vario 1918 Trench Watch. Now, foregoing all of the different introductions that we mentioned before, why Thailand? All we can say flat out is one of the favorites in this channel. And I was very excited when they emailed me that I was going to get one of their Adamascus, the top of the line Adamascus that comes with a Damascus case. And I was pleasantly surprised that there's actually a lot of design proficiency in this watch, specifically with how it uses disrupted design. So how does disrupted design heighten this one-of-a-kind piece? And it truly is a one-of-a-kind piece in many aspects, but that's what we're going to discuss in our latest Blueprint segment. This video is brought to you by Wise Thailand. 
Many watches that measure under the 40mm diameter is often categorized under the vintage proportions. Right now, that sizing is somewhat on a comeback, so it makes sense that we see these types of watches even more. That's one of the reasons for this AD773's nostalgic aesthetic and is a good place to start our examination of this modern classic. On smaller 6.25 inch wrists, it fits just right and comfy with its pleasing 47mm lug distance. The curved profile also delivers a form of comfort that matches its soft leather strap. This calfskin band is pleasing to the touch and has a good organic sheen to it. Weiss offers its Adamascus line with an extra strap that doubles the entertainment for this timepiece. This Dolaro Midnight Blue leather is chock full of details and changes the personality of the AD773. And then part of the fun is switching between any straps of your choosing such as this lighter stock strap from Amazon. It's a little playful fun that shows off the versatility of the Adamascus. Speaking of fun, let's compare it to whatever we could grab in the drawer. Beside the Adamascus Diver, the vintage aesthetics is strong with these too. The dimensions are near identical like the same shot of espresso but just a different beam. What I like with both of these is the thinness of the case that's just endearing. It reminds me of the Parts PRX, a super versatile watch for that tiny wristed crowd. The Adamascus is a lot more curvaceous and the lug distance is a bit farther. Surely, both will get a lot of wrist time. That's what makes this watch familiar to the watch fan. Now let's explain what makes this special. Let's begin by focusing on the dial design. While the outside of the case is littered with curves, the dial is full of angles that points to the center. These converging angles also accomplishes another design principle, making space. By starting out wide and reducing in size as it approaches the tip, it creates the illusion of space from the surface underneath. The dial further amplifies this by creating this circular barrier with the index alignment. This visual impression makes the center of the dial look spacious, even though there's much detail such as the numbers inside it. The other elements such as the seconds hand marker and the counterweights on the hands matches the rest of the index angles, bringing the design together. This striking contrast against its curvy case is a clear example of disruptive design. The indexes are different enough to create a visual interest, but not too disruptive to grab much more attention than it should be which is reserved for the main attraction. And that's just one way that it disturbs your expectations. The next one is more apparent when examined closer. While the case shape and size is familiar, the big disruption here is the unusual case material used. Damascus steel is a way of forging metals by folding it numerous times to achieve its striped pattern. Wise goes the full mile here by also forging their buckles in Damascus steel. The chamfers are all still polished so it continues to capture your attention at any angle. Down at the back of the watch, the case back frame is also made of Damascus steel, so Weiss did not skip on the effort there. Now let's revisit those indexes and linger on them for a while. I mean, just look at those gorgeous and crisply cut facets. If there was a reason to own a loop, it would be this. Whenever light passes over these markers, the visual pleasure is just hypnotic. The sunburst surface further aids in guiding the light for your eyes. They also have quite a volume to them, further imposing their presence to you. This model gets a cool blue seconds hand that gives a streak of vibrancy to this monochromatic dial. As your sight pushes outward, the light play continues as light alternates the stripes of the Damascus steel. It stops you on your tracks, it disrupts your expectations. But what's always expected is the wise quality loop that never fails. Currently priced at $700 as of this writing, it's a tremendous value for something unique. The Ad Damascus takes what is familiar and spins it in a way that captivates onlookers while imbuing personality in every piece. It is very easy to contradict, to disagree, to disrupt. But to make it this refined takes a measure of wisdom. 
By using disruptive design principles, WISE was able to breathe new life into this classic design and the WISE Adamascus AD773 is the epitome of their unique design and their ability to produce. And that is why this is a blueprint for using contrast and disruptive design. And now it's time for your viewer comments. We'll begin with more issues about the DWH5600. I know I wanted to get that. It's still not here. It's really hard to get it in Aruba. I've, been, I've had a comment just uh, today that uh, even in the Philippines, it's not available yet. So while well, everybody's eager to try it out, there are some who already had hands on with it. And we have three comments here regarding the DWH5600. We're going to breeze through them and then we're going to comment on them. Uh, cool PK Duck says, My DWH5600 works great ever since I got it. However, one needs to be paired with the phone and do the firmware update. I doubt that other owners did that. And by the way, the H5600 is made in Thailand. Okay, first and foremost, it's fine to have it made in Thailand. Most G-Shocks are made in Thailand, so that's a tidbit there. Uh, but we're going to get back to his comment. Next, GB Hunter 5 says, I'm finding the battery life is not optimal when using the HR monitor. Always on and notifications on. Been getting three to four days without much sun exposure. So that's not what we expected. Many people were actually saying that. I'm not going to read the rest of his comment. It's kind of uh, long there. But again, okay, but he did mention here about the sun exposure, the light exposure could be an issue, but we'll get back to that. And finally, uh, Danny Moore 6886 says, got one today. It sucks. Large uh, letters, all caps. Can't get it to do anything right. It sucks. Again, okay. so he's really shouting at our face here. Well, Danny. If you're watching this video, you may want to look at what Cool PK Duck said. Maybe you just need to update the firmware. So that could be an issue. That's why it's not really functioning properly. But I do hear that the app is still garbage, as many people would put it lightly. So even if you update the firmware, there's still a big chance that it will suck based on your standards. And we couldn't blame you because if you've been experiencing all of these um, fitness tracking watches from Garmin and even Apple, then maybe the H, uh, DWH5600 would be underwhelming for you. However, yes, people, just a reminder, before you complain, try and update the firmware first. Now, this is something that's new to the G-Shock crowd or, well, maybe not new because there are some... G-Shock, um, G-Shocks out there that have been using this fitness tracking uh, modules and, and these MIP displays and, and, and these smart functions for a while now and it's I guess it's part of the game or it's part of life updating your firmware so try and update your firmware first maybe that would solve many of your issues and cool PK Duck says that that solved this but Here's the, going back to GB uh, Hunter 05's comment, four to, three to four days. Now that is not going to cut it for what we've been promised. Well, actually we're not being promised, but we, they did mention that they're going to go up to days if you just leave the heart tracker, uh, heart monitor on. I, I remember, I think it's like seven days or 11 days, something like that. But now he's saying that maybe it's the sunlight exposure that's not helping him on this end. But um, one, I guess that's why G-Shock said that it's just solar assistance. It's not tough solar. When it comes to uh, G-Shock solar functions, you always go for the tough solar because that has been uh, tested for many years now, for decades even, to actually power the watch enough it's enough to power the watch without ever like, changing the battery well 
without changing the battery for years at the very least. And now it's this uh, new MIP Display Square is just solar assisted, and now we know why because it's just, it could last just three to four days, and that sucks. And just like what <laughs> Danny Moore says, but maybe in a different way. And that sucks because, like many of us, we're hoping at the very least that it's going to be a lot more days than that. So there's more issues with the DWH5600. I'm, I also like commented in uh, Bogrot's um, comment also earlier. I replied to that, and it's really swaying me on the other side now. I'm not really so enthusiastic anymore to, and and I'm not so enthusiastic anymore in getting uh, one of these, but. I have one of these uh, inbound, hopefully it will be here soon, as soon as that um, contact of mine um, gives me some update on it. Scott Burnett says here, personally I love the CW logo, so he's talking about the CW um, C65 bronze that I, Dune, C65 Dune bronze that I reviewed uh, last week, and it actually means something according to him. Being English though, I am not exactly impartial, but that's fine. You don't have to be impartial with these kind of things. You can be partial all you want. Not sure this is the fairest comparison on aesthetics, but the Aurora very purposely given a brutalist style, case, shape, and dimensions. Yes, that is true. I was aware of that. The Dune is immaculate though, and matching the bronze bracelet, etc. He, he, um, owns uh, these two brands so that's a that's a good thing well it's a good thing for the brands but not, <laughs> not for any of us who um, who have no stock on these um, these watches and these watch brands but going back to that logo I am also uh, in agreement with uh, Scott here it is a very good decision in CW to actually simplify their logo remove their own um, text of uh, Christopher Ward and um, it may have been divisive at first but now everybody or not everybody but a lot of people are now in favor of this new logo it's a little bit patriotic uh, some may may put it but to me it looks aesthetically pleasing and simple and actually now iconic and that's what you want when you have a brand when you have a, an emblem it has to be iconic that's the, the whole that's why it, it's called an icon you know it's easy to to spot you don't have to read it you just identify with that uh, design and actually that's what cw with christopher ward was able to do so kudos to them i think that's one of their biggest changes that um that is significant to the brand the, the change of logo they've changed their logo uh, a few times but this one I hope would stick and seeing from the reception from their fans it's actually a very good thing Bill uh, what did I say Bill Bill Somerset 238 says I don't think the comment guys please pay attention was very polite I understand how you feel but I think that that can be taken as rude I've never been in a store and have a sales associate tell me Pay attention, you're running a store selling yourself. Okay, now Bill Somerset here may have some good intentions because he is concerned at me being or coming off as rude. Otherwise, he wouldn't have not commented. I appreciate that that you're uh, looking after my uh, reputation here. But let us all keep in mind that this is a pirate show. And have you ever seen a pirate that's not rude? Good for thought. You should think that. You should. You should, you should uh, maybe you should watch more of my uh, videos so that you can see, or maybe watch the whole context or the whole show. Because again, this these small segments are cut from a longer form show, and if you look at that, then maybe you'll understand the context of uh, why I, I say those things. And also, I don't find that as rude when I ask people to pay attention. It's like when your teacher is telling you, hey, pay attention. Do you find that rude? It is their job or you're paying them so that you actually pay attention. You're actually going to my channel 
to pay attention and not just watch me bumble over or like make a string of bloopers and, and, and outtakes or maybe you are watching my channel because of that and if you do then you're banned from the show I don't know what you're, what you're thinking right now but if you are concerned at me okay you're not banned from the show but I'm not rude Christian Desmarias no wait Christian Des- Desmarais or maybe it's Christian Desmar Ice. I don't know Christian Desmarais 8135 says the bloopers at the end you see people are some people are actually going and uh, into this channel just to look at the bloopers and he was talking about here the change the, the, the changes everything the AWM 500D that I reviewed like a year ago the best metal G-Shock of 2021 under $500 and to give you some context there you know so that you don't have to watch the video you see I'm the only channel that encourages you not to watch the whole video anyway as a context the outtake that he's talking about here is after I reviewed the watch I was talking to my wife my wife said that I sounded angry and I said I'm not angry I'm just extemporaneous I don't have a script so I have to like talk like this I might still be angry or sound angry to her she's sitting right there uh, if, you, if you don't know it but she's sitting right there she's trying to be silent she's trying to ignore me it's the actual thing that uh, that I uh, that I said I said look I need a new mic I was saying it as hard and as loud as I could. I even come off as angry to her. But she, she's just ignoring me. Just like right now. She's ignoring me, not saying anything about what I'm doing right now. No, look, I'm going to take a picture. She's actually here. Where's my camera? Where's my camera? There. She's right there. You see? She's right there. Right behind the screen. Okay. And with and yes, she's still ignoring me. She's banned from the show. Well, let's see. Maybe I'm banned from the house. User HQ8QK8YR8D. I, I assume YouTube's just making up these uh, numbers. Um, he or she is commenting on the proof the JLC is better than Rolex. He says, or she says, disagree. Look at that dusty edge of the hands. Well, you sir, whoever you may be. Newsflash. JLC is not the only one. Look at this. Look at the tech. Look at Rolex. They all have that. So, uh, maybe you should lower your expectations. That uh, dust and edges, uh, or, or like rough edges on these um, watches actually count but let's look at it this way um, me, as much as these watches are machined or uh, made uh, in factories with, with different kinds of mass production techniques it's still going to have these impurities it's inevitable there's no such thing as a completely pristine watch or anything in this world there's going to be defects there's going to be like these smaller um, imperfections that's actually what makes these watches so valuable and pricey and unique and higher end luxurious if they have less of these uh, imperfections but that doesn't mean that they're perfect or they're completely uh, devoid of these uh, imperfections dust and scratches and whatnot so Maybe you should expect less from your higher end watches. Abdul Watches says, I think Panerai is going a different route with the smaller sizes and even precious metals complication watches. Yes, Abdul Watches is right. Of late, you could see that Panerai is starting to go the route of smaller watches because they could see there's like a big audience that they've been uh, gathering because of these smaller, more accessible um, sizes before we could see that they're really known as these big watches for big burly men and big wrists right but now they're offering also 
for the more common crowd. And I think that's a good idea. And in fact, well, working from Shiba's, I now discovered that actually one of their more popular brands is Panerai. And we've been moving a lot of Panerais. And even in this slow season, there's a lot of Panerais being sold. So that just goes to show that there really is a big market. Remember, we live here in Aruba and we're moving a lot of Panerais. So uh, Panerais got something going for them. And that's, I think, a large part is because of these new sizing options that they've been offering. Damisu8 says, he's also talking about that, the Panerai. He says here, I'm a G-Shock and Panerai guy. That's all there is in my collection. They're perfect stable mat, stable, uh, stable mates there. Tools, rugged, and no nonsense. All of these people who want dainty 36 millimeter watches, hey, Lana, you're hurting my feelings there. Well, I don't want 38, 36, I want 38. Anyway, I don't get it. However, I do have to be careful not to bash any of my watches on door frames. I keep having to repair the door frames. <laughs> well, actually, that's kind of funny and unexpected. Bravo on that. A very nice comment there, and I could see like if that's him. Like, yeah, he's a very manly man, if you ask me. And yes, G-Shocks and Panerai go hand in hand. If you can pull it off, why not? You know, and both watches are built to last, and they're built like tanks. And um, it's just a, a matter of taste. Uh, Dami Su here prefers those kind of uh, big watches. And if you can pull it off, that's fine. And bravo. And just keep enjoying these watches. And it doesn't, he doesn't seem to have any prejudice against um, G-Shocks, even though he's a, he's a fan of Panerai. So. And with that, we're actually going... We're going to our Zilos portion right away, but this is a, a different kind of Zilos portion that we're going to uh, do. So let's cue Mr. Celine Driver as usual with our show. I know Panerai makes great watches. I can even admit this featured Panerai is good looking. It's just that wart on the side, that, that, that thing. I think that's how he pronounced that. That looks so Rube Goldberg. I, I, I have to research that. What does, what, he, what does he mean by that? I just can't do it, sir. I can't get past that thing hanging off the side. That's Mr. Zilos. Now, Mr. Zilos, I understand. And I have said before, it's a matter of preference. And your preference is against Panerai. But just to irritate you a little bit more here's that pesky little wart on the side but this time on the side of a zealous hammerhead as a bonus here's a here, here it is on the side of a zealous mako or a zealous black tip hope you like it see you next time On this episode of Designer Notes, we're going to be finally reviewing the the what the Vario, oh. <laughs> taking an interest with this. Why are we taking an interest with this? Why are we taking an interest? With this? Military watches. Yeah. Again, military watches has been military watches has been gaining a cult following. If I put it here, would, would my hair grow in this in the forearms? Mommy here. Mommy. Ika, Gusuma? No? Really? Thank you.